Good morning, everybody. I've got Shadow here, back in modern after our quite successful and enjoyable endeavor into standard, uh, where we got to play white instead of red um, for the time being. Um, but we're back to our favorite format, and we might go a little bit old school today. <clears throat> there is the option also of us playing the nation over Phyrexian Scriptures because as good as Phyrexian Scriptures is there definitely are times where we want to have the nation but the same can be said the other way around um, but overall like the nation is still the best card that we have available to ourselves as a sweeper of course the problem with that is that we just don't have any real graveyard hate outside of <clears throat> um, outside of surgical extraction. So let's have a look here. Mm. Of course, also do have a lot of stuff in our sideboard against one or two things. Shit. No, I fucked it up. So, on the one hand, we do have a lot of stuff against creatures in general because our main board is built in a way that we can handle creature decks, but against humans, of course. Um, we usually have at least 9 to 10 dead cards, or close to dead cards in the main board. <clears throat> then, there are Grim Lavamancers, which I really like a lot. Um, and the cre creature mirrors, or creature matchups. But on the other hand, um, Grim Lavamancers get worse in multiples, and some decks just board Graveyard Hate against us. And then we basically cannot play Lavamancer anymore. So I do think that multiples of the Lavamancer is not really worth it. And the same goes with is it Steady Caster. Sometimes, I mean, it's not bad necessarily to have two um, because they still, you know, make each other better. But sometimes it's just not enough. So this be the sideboard that I would like to play. Um, but it's a little lackluster. And the nation surgical basically fills the role of Phyrexian scriptures. Um, and by us having so many other types of removal spells, we don't have to rely as much on our sweepers. That's why most Phyrex decks don't really play more than one Damnation because you usually don't really need it except for maybe Eldrazi or something like that. So what does that mean for us? Um, for us this means that I'm gonna go with a cyborg for now. But as I said, like if you aren't convinced of Rex Scriptures, if you aren't convinced of Nibble Obstructionist, you know all these cards that are play that for some people don't make any sense um, then you can easily just transform the cyborg here into a Karanos for the Scorpion God the Nation for Phyrexian Scriptures go with maybe Magma Spray for Grim Lava Mansa so you have something against Blood Ghasts and yeah Anger of the Gods of course you know stuff like that um, but I'm pretty happy with the way we build our cyborg so we're going to jump into a competitive league. Let's see what we're going to do here. Today, early in the morning. On a Thursday. Oh, um, 
animals listed here. All right, yes. Of course, no lands. As it always is the case, and it also always is the case, like, when we mulligan, then we just hit the hand that just has an island, like a basic and the feel of rune. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But that's moto, sometimes you just gotta deal with it. Alright, um, yeah, we need at least one additional black source. Potentially two, but I'm just gonna put Bloodstained Mire to the top and bottom the other card because we can't also draw too many lands and feel of ruin. At least can us can get us a slow black source. We're up against humans. Humans on a mulligan as well though. So uh, maybe we still have a shot here. Um yeah, we're probably just shocking here. So that we don't have to... Like, we're saving, basically. Potentially two life. Alright, Noble Hierarch. We're just gonna kill that thing. I would assume that if he had another one drop here, he would have played it the other way around in order to enhance the... Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so if we play the tar pit here, we would open us up to a freebooter that could take our terminate. Therefore, we're not going to do that one. Our opponent appears to have drawn Lance and Ethervile. Um, otherwise, he certainly wouldn't have done this particular line of play. And this all doesn't seem like it was. <clears throat> Lining up the way he wanted it to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna kill the Noble Hierarch here, constraining him a little bit on mana. But most importantly, we can kill the this thing here with our Field of Rune or the Horizon Canopy. And maybe just make it awkward for him to. Um, Play around with the Ethervile. No more fraction is also not the worst card ever. Do you want to get rid of his redraw here? Should we just block? Thing is, we're quite insulated against a lot of. Um, Yeah, I think we're just gonna go after the Horizon Canopy here. So this way we basically also get rid of a another creature. I wanna go with red because of PNQ and Lalar. Um we do have Nimble to play in between. Let's see. Reflector Mage. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, we're still at a high enough life total that um, we can play around these these types of creatures a little bit. All right. Now the red souls. So now we're just playing out Nimble Obstructionist. And then we do have six mana next turn. We can go Lin uh, Liliana, tick down, get a Nimble back, maybe hit a Snapcaster Mage, which would be better, of course. Uh, make up the Ethelbile at two. And have one card in hand. So most likely. As long as it's not another Thalia's Lieutenant, um, we're not gonna get caught off guard here. We can just go after the Lieutenant. If, of course, it is another Thalia's Lieutenant, then we do have a problem. But... Alright, Phantasmal Image. Um, that's worse, of course. But either way, we would have um, lost. Our creature here. All right. So we can play Liliana, take her down. Snapcast Mage, of course, would be the best. If we take her up, <clears throat> we're just gonna lose her. Of course, we could still one for one trade here, but we would do the same if we just tick down. So we're gonna play her. Could of course tick her up and go out of Thalys Lieutenant as well. Now we kind of like we can see what it does. Now we would have to. Kill it first. If he doesn't draw a creature, he has to take Liliana with both. The thing is, this is the easy kill, of course. Jace. Yeah, Jace might be worth it. Have to be a little bit careful because depending on what he draws, he could still just alpha strike us here. But having access to terminate is um, of utmost importance in regards. Okay, so a Thalia's lieutenant, of course, kills us here. on that we are okay I think okay now we need to kill his this thing Going down to two. Still die to a lot, of course. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, Liliana kills this one. Or takes this one down to one. Chase kills here. We have three mana left, but can't activate our... Top it anymore. 
That way we would die. So if we terminate here, kill that thing. I think we need to do a uh, draw step, Colligan's commands, kill the noble hierarch, so that we take down here. Because this stone we just can't get rid of the Reflector Mage. We could of course also just go after an Aether Vial and kill the Noble High right now. Let's see what he does. Alright, so he's sticking the Aether Vials up. Hasted creature kills us, but nothing else does. So I think I'm gonna go draw step. And then force the play here. Okay. Apparently it didn't draw. Alright, noble hierarchy. Right. Perfect. So the the correct play there. And now we really need to find uh, Pian here and Lar. Sadly, we don't have any means of regenerating. our life tolls, therefore just have to deal with it. Since we cannot bl um, just cannot prevent a hasted flyer from killing us, um, we're just not playing around it. Doesn't look like it were something we had to, to worry about. Now I'm gonna tick down here. We could either tick up the Liliana on the Reflector Mage and then recast Lightning Bolt with Jace. That'd be an option in order to kill the Reflector Mage. Of course, we get blown out if he has another Thalia's Lieutenant, but you know that might also just not be the case. And then we had Cryptic Torpid up in case another Reflector Mage comes around or something like that. So probably that's the play for this turn. And then next turn um, we can either get back Chase or something similar. And we're making the play because we cannot beat two creatures on the board. Meddling mage. Yeah. Sadly, now we should have done it the other way around, right? Could have ticked down here. That's. I think that was a misplay. Shouldn't have ticked up with Liliana first. Should first tick down 
with the Jace. And the Skullgeam Tarn doesn't help. All right, so we're getting rid of all of our counter magic as always against humans. And the Obstructionist is not the worst card ever. Because it just blocks their flying stuff. So I'm gonna go with this lineup here. Yeah, I think I should have just ticked down the Liliana and kept the Jays around. Get the Nimble. But that would have also made it, made it a little bit awkward because... No, that wouldn't have been a winning line as well. Should have just um, played... Just ticked down the other way around. Just the sequencing there was a little off. Hmm. <laughs> Want to say put on top? Is it Zedicas? Is certainly good in the matchup, especially in com uh, combination with Liliana. Um, we're hoping that he starts off, yeah, not with the champion here. It's actually quite bad for us. Let's see what we get. Lightning bolt is good. And these two can probably go to the bottom again. So let's see. So the champion's definitely going to grow. If he plays a Kaisei of Freebooter, then we will have problems killing the champion next turn if we Inquisition now. So we're just going with a bolt and maintain our um, our possibilities here. can't make a sequencing mistake here again because if we go with Inquisition here he plays Athalia we only have Bolt available we need to kill Athalia the next turn and then we don't have any place we could also go with Nizit Zedicaster after the oh, there's a dark confident well that's not a problem at all all right so this is already over I think um, the most two most important turns have been played, and Dark Confidence is just not going to cut it against us. Um, they are also a little bit slow with uh, the lands and no Ethervile, and now we can just go kill the one toughness creatures, of which they have a lot, if they can't um, grow each other. There's an Ethaval, which is also too late. Two, yeah, well, that's not going to work out as well. So, first of all, we're going to have a look at his hands, and I think he's just going to give up here. It's very interesting. So, he had the Noble Hyrax in hand, but he chose to go with a champion instead. Um... Because, of course, you wanted to grow the champion, and it's a little bit faster of a start. And if you do have enough mana sources, then you can go for that play. Um, but otherwise, I think this is just beyond over. Yeah. I mean...
is only um, eight creatures, probably not after sideboarding anyway, but generally speaking, yes, like eight creatures that can withstand a Liliana and an is it said a caster on the board. Therefore, um, yeah, this was over rather quickly. Um, not a keep. And this is a tough keep. Probably need to take the tar pit here, because we need the mana. But if he does have a fast start, um, okay. So I'd much rather see a. So we either go with the tar pit here and do have the terminate up next turn, or we go with the blood Mire, play the grim flare, which uh, grim lava mansa, which might lead him to. Sorry about the background noise. Um, to make his place a little bit different, and then if we draw another mana source, of course that's way better for us. Because then we can just zero visions and activate the Grim Lavamanta. Fetch land would be the best case scenario. Freebooter. Is it a freebooter? No, it's a dog confident. I don't know why you would play a dog confident here against us. Although, if we don't draw a land now, yeah. All right, polluted delta. So we're gonna go top, top, do that. <clears throat> And the next turn should be a pretty good one, hopefully. <laughs> he could have double Thalia's Lieutenant, of course, then um, not going to be as good. And the slow mana sometimes really hurts. Let's see, Horizon Canopy, I'm also a good draw. Doesn't hurt him at all. Collector. Yeah. Certainly the best thing to take here. But we still do have a couple of plays. Just need to be careful now. So, um, we either have a terminate, or we have a look at the hand. But we can't have both. And I think having a look here might be beneficial. Like for forcing the play here. And then we still have Snapcaster Mage and Terminate's up. Yep, Thalia's Lieutenant. And there's a Magic Rider. Sure. Well, we're taking a lot of damage next turn, but we need to kill that thing. Angrim Lava Mansa really has to put in some hours. <clears throat> but 
this needs to be a red source and we basically can't afford him to no not another one fuck my life all right this is this is problematic so we're taking five here lost a terminate like already got two for ones two times go now to eight Needs some sort of fast mana. I think I'm willing to wait here a little bit. Of course, another Thalia's Lieutenant is really, really bad for us. But if he attacks, and we can trade with a Sin Collector or with two Sin Collectors and terminate a Thalius Lieutenant. Then we might really have him in a squeeze. And then we aren't... Sin Collectors also, of course, um, exile the shit. So therefore, our Garden Flayer is a little bit stranded. Could also take out the Noble Hierarch. Because... Um, of mana constraints for them, but that would depend on what they draw, uh, what they do with their Aethervile there. Yeah, I think we're just gonna block, kill, if possible. Interesting. Now they're constraining the mana significantly. So that wasn't a good draw, I guess. All right. Now we're going for the block here. And him attacking in this this order here makes me think that he does have. Another Thalius Lieutenant or Yeah, or a Phantasmal Image. Therefore I'm thinking that I'm gonna kill the Thalius Lieutenant here. Cause either way it will be the strongest creature on board. And if it is a Phantasmal Image, um, then this is certainly the best way to go about it. And just another Thalia's Lieutenant. Fuck my life! What a fucking lucky draw. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're dead. We are dead. Otherwise, we'd be in a really good position. Like, we would have four life more. Had taken out two, could have, you know, like he would just be stranded with this and like a phantasmal image of some sort, and then we'd win. Yeah, but this way is. not winnable. Unbelievable. Man is right as well. Of course. Only the best of the best draws. Alright. Round one goes to humans. And that certainly um, I 
I mean, game one, we just made a mistake, but game two. Sorry, just have to check the phone here. Are you gonna join our match here? All right, good hands. Can't keep that. We do have a Colligan's command, but again, we're a little light on early interaction here. Seal over C is problematic. We're one turn too slow. All right. Um, hmm. They apparently have either Karn. Yeah, up on Revenge is something that we definitely cannot let resolve. Or any difference for us? I don't think. They either have another Arpon Ravager or they do have a Karn in hand. Either way, that's not good for us. Shit. So to a certain degree we can still get around it. Um, but this is also already very grim. We cannot really go after the steel overseer here because if we go destroy here, just takes it with the Arpon Ravager. Which of course is okay, but you know, we, we can't kill three other things, so we have to kill the Arpon Ravager. So I think the play here is discard and destroy artifact. And <clears throat> then he will place any everything on the Steel Level Overseer that hopefully gives us a little bit of time because it pumps stuff. And then maybe uh, we can, two turns from now, we can go um, Snapcaster and get back the Colgan's command. Playing as well. What a broken draw. Alright, he puts everything on the Mem Knight, and that makes sense. Certainly the correct decision here by opponent. Although that leaves his Steel Overseer vulnerable um, to a bolt for one more turn. So we're taking five. Next turn, we're just gonna die. Snapcaster. So let's see. Eight on board. 
we can reduce it to six but it just if he attacks we're still dead so can't go with that plan we need to wait for one more turn jump block with the snapcaster mage and then go with the call guns command next turn and maybe get like oh man unreal Second time in the row that we lose to the, like we, well it doesn't matter, don't want to complain. Don't want to complain here. Leaks, um, looks like a capable hand. Fear of Ruin gives us a little bit of play against Manlands. Collision, of course. We'll slow them down a little bit. So, hmm. how did he plan on getting its cards out? So, single pass is an easy target for the steady caster. Ornithopter is not. But this looks like an, a sketch keep. Probably just going after... I'm just gonna go after the edge jammer. We do have the most problems with that. Can go after most of the other stuff. Next turn we want to go is it Sadie Caster and I actually don't want any of these because we can snap back whatever we do want. <clears throat> we already have both of these in our graveyard. Therefore it just slows us down. Come on opponent. Can't be real. So just taking one here and now we're starting to go after him. That certainly is a good draw as well. The only thing that we need to get rid of um, is the... Come on! Master of Ethereum, that's what I was going to say.
Well, I don't think there's a choice. Of course, we also want to kill the cranial plating or get rid of the cranial plating in their hands. Our opponents are ripping, man. What the fuck is going on? And we're just fucking drawing lands all the time. Spring leaf drum. Cranial plating. Master is a 6-6. Six, six. So much fun. Thing is, he cannot attack with a signal blast, which at least is something that's good. So we can either ch just go chump block mode here, or we go throw two, two, two thopters in front of the other thopter here, and kill with an easy steady caster. That would shrink this one a little bit. We want to have our pink here on our in the graveyard anyway. I think this is the block. Man, we just fucking need a freaking motherfucking terminate. Not all the time this shitty snapcasters. Liliana's also too late. Liliana can kill off the signal pest. Definitely don't want a Fulminator here. Chump block here this turn. Maybe in combination with Grim Lava Mancer, it's even more right. We can buy back P and Kiran if we wish to. Are you shitting me, man? This dude's ripping. More than that. Unreal. That's just, that's just bad. Like this is definitely a mistake of him. If you go and make a token here, you know nothing happens. It's all good in the hood. Ah shit. There's a lot of sugar scourge as well. I don't have a clue how we get out of this. Just insane. Just insane. And this is how we like lose games at all. Like our opponents have to draw like the most broken shit ever in order for us to lose those games. Um so next turn we would have another snapcaster if we wanted to. 
thing is that cranial plating is irrelevant. So we probably need at least two blockers next turn. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this resolve. I do think that we need the Snapcaster Mage. So let's see. Well, we can take down this and this if we really want to. Well, we can not block either of these so we can also already go after it just need to survive one more turn in order to um, do we die to do we straight up die to enigma plexus here one two three four five six seven eight no not straight up but it's close. Nine <laughs> and itself ten. That's unreal. He takes down here with the car and <laughs> then we just die up. <laughs> I think we just die here. Don't even get to it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Boone figured it out. Um, he does have Ornithopter also enables him, well, Construct as well, but so he does have the instant speed. Equip. I can't believe this. Cannot believe this. Um, if we shocked the steam vents, then we could have killed the Ingmoth Nexus, but we wouldn't have been able to fetch for red, therefore we also wouldn't have been able to um, kill the Vol Scourge afterwards. All right, guys, I'm willing to do it now. I'm willing to do it now. Putting the donations back in. Going all anti-creature here. Pissed off by that shit. And then this one's also more or less irrelevant. We can put in a Karanos again. So this is pretty old school. Zero graveyard hate, but our graveyard hate sucks anyway, so who cares, right? 
Man, that fucks me up. Man, that's not cool. That is not cool. We're actually aiming for our 50th qualifying point here. It's somewhat of a little anniversary um, that we accomplished in a little more than two months. Which is not bad. I think we went 5-0 went, um, five, oh, five times. Uh, which is 15 qualifying points. Which means um, 34 times. Oh, we went to a four and one. Just decent. Just definitely decent. But we need to play catch up here. Had to rather fast rounds. Odo is waiting or oh, making us wait. Come on, Modo. As slow as Modo is, taking like forever. All right, after this rather long break, we're back. And now we have two bolts, and I promise you, we're going to play against, um, what's the worst matchup here? Probably Troll. Because we have no way of activating our Logic Knot, you know, either getting hit by a guy's turn three, or some some of that sort. Treat a village, so it is Jund. All right, all right. Also, a uh, lightning bolt, of course, not the best to get shot. Or rock could also just be rock. 
Um, yeah, I think that he is going to take our logic not here. Therefore, we're just going to fetch for Watery Grave here. Can't really do anything against it. Um, logic Knot is somewhat of our safeguard. But Nimble Obstructionist, if he doesn't have a non fetch land remaining in his hand, then Nimble Obstructionist might also be his priority. Yep. <laughs> so it was a tough decision for our opponent, but after a while of thinking, he had to go. With the less spectacular option. So let's see. Um, of course I want to get down Liliana here, but he doesn't know about Liliana yet. Maybe it's better to wait for one more turn. Because I don't want to get rid of any of these. Because um, I, I do want to utilize our logic knot to a certain degree. And if he goes discard spell creature, then it's still a good two for one with Liliana. And we're just protecting with a logic knot. The only thing that would really hurt us here is um, two, two discard spells. So opponents throwing away a Tarmogoyf. And I'm not going to counter that because I do want to go after it with Liliana. And then um, hold up bolt for a potential uh, treetop village activation. Unless he has a dryad arbor in his deck. Ah, he's just bolting us. All right, so it is John. Sure, but it's a clean two for one. Therefore, um, it's still a fine trade. And one that we might have not gotten elsewise. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so no Liliana coming on. Let's have a look then. Oh, why didn't he? That's somewhat weird. Um, so I don't really mind. Do I mind the blood braid elf? We have wandering funeral, so Liliana of the Veil probably isn't a problem. Yeah, we are going after the blood braids. Counter the Colligan's commands and then let Liliana resolve. I think that's the thing here. And if he doesn't want to use the Colligan's command, you know, he doesn't have any place, that's fine with me as well. I thought so.
I'm gonna fetch here in a way that if he plays Liliana, we can just deploy both bolts. One, two. So Liliana is coming along, and he's gonna make us discard. So the thing is, he this way we know that he doesn't have any removal, and I don't think that I want to waste lightning bolts on Liliana. We're just gonna go after her with a one ring fumarole. Um, so I'm just gonna hit him, and then go with that thing here. And here it really shines, right? Um, you couldn't have made that play with the creeping top hits. And he discarded and oozed, man. That's Ooze is a good card to have against us. I'm not gonna go with a wandering fumarole. Um, I'm gonna activate the Fear of Ruin and have a look if they do play some sort of creature. Could of course also just terminate the thing, but why would we, right? Uh, maybe no. I think we're just gonna terminate here. Like if he wants to follow it up with the Liliana or something, then we would have given him oh man the option to do that here. And I don't think that he does have access to another basic green source. Oh no, he should he should have. A green sauce. Uh, they usually don't play red sauces. Two cards in hand. Most likely some sort of removal spell. So therefore, and we wasted the field of ruin. Uh, that was my mistake here. That wasn't well played. But it should be some sort of removal in their hand. Which we're not going to run into. Another ooze, man. Why are our opponents always so fucking lucky? We're gonna take it here because I want to be able what did he eat here? Middle obstructionist. Sure. So we have a way to prevent it from coming down again, which is important, which is very important. Kieran Lar is also a very good card matchup.
there anything that we can take? Liliana, Ooze, Instant Soul Street, nope. There is not. Okay, fine. Nope. All right, he's empty handed, we are empty handed, um, but we do have a man land and we're on draw here. So we're gonna, definitely going to go and be aggressive. Got a bolter and then tick for attack for six. Could have also just let her attack us and then alpha strike her, but I don't think there is a top deck that can win him the game here. Except for. No, no, there isn't. Right. <clears throat> up to sideboarding here. Uh, we want to have these three probably getting rid of this one. Nimble obstructions is okay, it's not great though. One less Jace's. Frex and Shrupshus in it by itself is okay, but it's also not the best in the matchup because it does really restrict the goal. Um, and yeah, since their creatures are each so potent and not um, like go through mass accumulation. do think that there's oh yeah um just gonna check out here like how far i am because i i haven't actually checked with the camera on the other side as to how pleasant that is to your eye so we're just gonna wait here for a second until he's done. Yeah, and I think like for the GP, I think we're just gonna go um, completely ignore graveyard interactions and just go with killing everything that's playing somewhat fair. So um, just checking here. All right, it's too big. That's not cool. That is not cool. Okay, gotta do that. Well, maybe I'm just doing it now. No, gotta do that at another time. It's not a perfect end by any stretch. But we might get there. It's it's a hand that could get there. Okay. Interesting, no play by opponent here. And I'm not willing to 
play of the Jays yet. That would be a huge tempo disadvantage. All right. He declined to play Goyf. We might be able to keep him off of Blood Braid. March for Pulse isn't relevant as of now. So it's either Ooze or Goyf. If we take the Goyf, we cannot kill the Ooze anymore. If we take the Ooze, we cannot kill the Goyf anymore. So that's somewhat of a pity. But we definitely have to take one of these. And I, I'm inclined to just take the Ooze. Um, unless he makes a mistake, he could also just... He waits for too long. No, but that then he'll be able to eat our Fulminator Mage. Yeah, we're taking the Ooze. Take a couple of hits off of Tarmogoyf. But a vanilla Tarmogoyf is always preferable to... Okay, yeah, a 3-4 Goyf is going to kill us sooner than later. Double red is important. Double black only for Liliana. And we need triple blue, of course. So we're going to go after the treetop here for him to not be able to follow the Goyf up with a Blood Braid Elf. And now we're just trying to hit either a discard spell he has a tomb left in hand so we can get him off of red and we need to need, um, to utilize the formulator here proactively because otherwise he would be able oh he drew another source sure that means that blood rate is coming down either way this turn and we only have one of two options either we kill the Blood Braid with our Colligan's Command. What just happened? Declines to play the Overgrown Tomb. Huh? And play the Blood Braid. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna counter this. Two guys are a little bit too many. Four black swords. Counter draw. Both seas gets rid of something. Man, I was totally mistaken here. I was 100% sure that we we're gonna run into something here. Um, Blood Braids. Probably still preferable. Yeah, now we're just gonna go after the Goyf. It's 
not pretty, but um, at least this way we get the job done. Uh, discard the mushroom poles. Needs an untapped lands, which she might have not drawn here. Okay. So, don't actually mind whatever it takes here. <clears throat> So playing Jace would be great, but we can't get rid of both his things in hand, and a Blood Braid could just kill us when it comes down. Okay. All right, this is way better. This is way. Better. So we can play a Jace. We somewhat insulate us from dying this turn. And if he doesn't do anything, so we could counter this here in order to protect our Colligan's commands. Because this, if we Colligan's commands here. That's still good. Oh, we're just gonna two for one here. He's forced to take the full moon data again, and therefore um, we can flip the Jace next turn and then make him discard once more. Because otherwise, we just take him off of green. If we draw land, then we can do that anyway. If we don't draw land, that's fine. All right, there is a land, a tap land though. <clears throat> so yeah. turn and discards. And we've gotten rid of all of his nasty stuff. And still have protection and can deploy a Fulminator Mage in order to get rid of Overgrown Tomb. Pretty good. I mean, it's not even the worst thing um, to have him play here. Maybe that's not even worth it. Ah, actually, let that, that resolve. We can't take us off anything important. Jace makes it a zero or two. So I'm good with this. then a bit from now we do have Colligan's command again and either Fulminator or Nimble doesn't really matter yet Right, flooding out a little, keeping the swamp in hand um, instead of 
playing it with the second tar pit because I want him to play like he only has two types of spells that he can play here right now all right and those are either discard spells or burn spells therefore I want him Yeah, so we're gonna, all right, I just was gonna say, we're gonna make him discard again and return Fulminator Mage, and then we weren't gonna kill any of the lands because uh, we were just gonna go after um, green sources. Cryptic Command has gotten worse against um, Jund because of Blood Braid, but other than that, Still a potent card in the matchup. <clears throat> Yeah, we have to play a little catch up here. It's a quite new situation for us. But something that we, you know, can still do. Still achieve. Lost to humans and to affinity. And I don't th even think, like, yeah, there were like one or two really minor mistakes, but that was nothing major. Um, so I'm not going to take the fall for it. And one could of course say, all right, um, if there are a lot of creature matchups in the meta, you know, switch Inquisition with a fail push and or a thoughts used with a fail push and you're almost unbeatable main board you could also just go with a grim lava mansa um for that matter and that'd also be fine and what's going on with moto here it's taking forever again <clears throat> By now, I mean, our Feet of Ruin here is basically just in there to fight Search for Skansas, right? The Feet of Ruin could also be another utility land, namely um, Scavenger Grounds. Just to fight graveyard decks better. But it also exiles our graveyard, so probably not the best thing. Tico, I think he's playing control. I think I played against against him yesterday as well. But I'm not 100% sure. I think he, he just said like, wow, those draws, something like that. I would just outplayed him. Uh, Exactly what I thought it was gonna be, and I think he's on Jeskai control, like the really controlly version. Is he opting in response? Or spell snaring? Yeah, exactly. This is what I meant, right? How can you possibly, like, he doesn't know the matchup. How can you possibly keep your hand like that? Like, this is insane. 
how are you gonna win against humans? How are you gonna win against like basically anything other than control? I mean, for this matchup, of course, you know, it's a decent hand. It is a decent hand. Um, not gonna play all Thoughtseize yet. Wanna have more information about his hand in the next turn. <clears throat> And so this way he also knows about our nimble obstructionist. Um, therefore, not fetching the scouting turn is definitely a mistake. I think we're going with the Teferi here. He only has Snapcaster in order to get rec uh, get the logic knot back. So we're gonna do this. We could have also gotten Snapcaster there and then banked on us fet drawing a uh, fetch land and then getting rid of the Teferi, but I think that's too, too risky because if we run to the Teferi in any sort of way, well, you know, sometimes, sometimes. So he probably has to play out the Snapcaster Mage here. How are we going to deal with that? Um, want to have a red source in order to play the terminate or we're just going to counter the snapcaster mage there's also a possibility but that would probably require us to yeah i don't want to play it untapped here Oh, Snapcaster Mage, that's also a good one. So this way we can probably just get rid of Terminate. It's not a great card here. We can also just wait for one more turn. He doesn't have any targets for the Snapcaster Mage. And we don't know if he drew anything good since last turn. To come around with a snapcaster yeah sure that's fine like he would have to have top decked a burn spell here and he wouldn't play a snapcaster mage this aggressively if he had Hmm. Colonnade is a little bit annoying though. And Jace what does what he's good at. Just choking uh choking. I think we're gonna go with a thought seed. Just in case. Yep, nothing. So If he does not draw a counter spell, we can kill the colonnades. If he does draw a counter spell, that'd be quite bad for us. Doing everything here to protect our Jays because having access to our discard spells in our graveyard is really, really good, really important. And of course, it's just choking damage as well. All right, so. does have a cryptic command here 
that'd be horrible. Let's see if this resolves. So counter spells get significantly worse now, of course. Ah. What could that be? It's either counter spell or land. Could also be a removal spell, but it would have to have be a path to exile. All right, he's not. He doesn't even care anymore. Just discarding the path. All right. All right. He does have something. So we're gonna attack first here in order to provoke whatever he wants to do. Snapcast mage. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, four. That should be it. I think. Nimble. And we don't really need nimble. If we get the attack through, then we can just sacrifice the thopter. What is that? Swings revelation? Or actually lottery not. Okay. So Boner was actually top decking pretty well here. But yeah, just conceded here. There was no getting back into the game. So let's see. Dispels, counter schools, fulminator mages. Definitely coming in. I cut here, cut here, cut this. We're also going to cut on these. Although Lilianas are good for mid-range decks in the control mirror, we just have better tools. Uh, we don't need to rely on sorcery speed um, cards in that regard. 
So the terminates usually aren't great in the matchup, but there are the combinates that sometimes we just don't hit with a fulminate mage or something. So I like to have one terminate in the main board after the boarding, and then we do have a lot of cheap interaction that actually interacts with our opponent and not with just their life total. Oh come on again! It's like. Did you count how many times we drew into Field of Ruin in our opening hands? Without having, you know, another significant land source. <clears throat> Alright. Definitely want to have the island there. And we are going to go with the Thoughtsies now. Because I want to prevent a search for a scanser coming down and I also want to know this guy is keeping loose hands man fucking loose hands like he's, he can't cast anything all right let's go with the snapcaster mage here And then we need to deploy. I hope he comes short of at least one land drop. Because then um, could draw, could top deck. Yeah, let's go top top. Alright, so this way we are able to Snapcaster now and get rid of the Electrolyze in his hand. Which is a huge deal for us, because that's always a 2 or 3 for 1. Uh, awesome. Pretty loose keeps here by opponents. <clears throat> Alright, um, put that to the bottom, put that to the top, play land, and just attack. Alright. So one more turn and he has to start discarding. We've also taken two of his cheapest most interactive spells oh man not bad not bad it is not a baddie not a baddie but a goodie all right so i don't want to fetch this here because i don't want to give him a target for the field of ruin unless we draw another blue source because then we can bounce it in response or a nimble obstructionist, but which would also be fine. He could should of course, you know, lightning helix at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, now he actually has a couple of uh, couple of spells. He does have cryptic now. He does have logic not up. Electrolyze gone. So we know about these five four cards in his hands. We have lethal here already. All right, yeah, he's dead. So 
well played opponents. I also want to fetch for the, you know. I mean, I'm complaining about the shuffling thing of Modo as well, but like, what are those keeps, man? Like, having zero playables in your hand and just like, yeah, four, five, six drops. I honestly do not know what it is with Modo that you always have to always find. Um, like one land in your first opener, and then oh no, it's a Vengevine deck or Dredge. Oh, fuck, yeah, it's Dredge. It's even worse. Ah, oh, damn it! It's like the worst of the worst for us. Could go with Thoughtseize. Try to catch. Yeah, I think we need to go with Thoughtseize here. Faithful Suiting and. Cathartic Reunion. That's what I was talking about. Pretty important. Two hits. This guy, man. Hitting a knock Amoeba here and a Stinkweed, which like are the two most important hits in the whole deck. Not bad. I guess we'll be thinking about here whether or not he wants to draw for a land card, because one land's actually pretty pretty tight for him. What's he dredging? Oh no, he's. Alright, he has all the important stuff in his graveyard already. And I'm not sure. We probably need to zero versions here. Just to set ourselves up. This goes to the bottom. Probably also goes to the bottom right. I mean, it's not bad to have, but we want to have the logic not up next turn, as well as terminate in order to prevent him from casting, say, a life from the loan or something in case he draws. Yeah, he's just drawing cards here in order to find the land source. And that's of course this is good for us. That gives us a little bit of speed. Wow, that's a cathartic reunion. Uh Faithful Sooting. Or just a conflagrate. For zero, right? Yeah. Alright, noble obstructionist. If he does find a fetch land, then we can counter it. Otherwise. We're just going to deploy it and attack. Attack, attack. Another tree corn. Yeah, I mean, it's good, but without him having more lands, we're just going to bank on our nimble here to get through. 
cool. Chase is actually a pretty good card, but yet still just keeping Ladino up here. Find a land source. Still not finding one. Yeah, I'm just keeping the lodging nut up, of course, for a faithful suiting or such, so that he just cannot draw into another land source. He already discarded three. I think they're playing like sixteen or something. Could have also played a PNK there, but if we find another bolt or a Snapcaster Mage, we can just kill him next turn. Okay, now we found a Bloodstained Mire, which he probably needs to shock, but he can't. Okay, he doesn't care, so he goes with a Conflagrate. Maybe. He needs to conflagrate here. And that should do it. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> oh fuck. I thought I was being cool and I just randomly. Um... Yeah, good. <laughs> Because I um, dealt for one too many. He's trying to hit knock Mevis here, I believe. Well, didn't hit any. All right. All right, all right, all right. So let's see. Isn't Zedicaster really good? Grim Navamans are probably also pretty good. Scorpion God can be like a roadblock in the late game that also... I know. <laughs> hmm. They know the veil just bad. Straight up bad. It terminates on great as well. I'll cut here. Uh, maybe not the Jays though. Jays is one of our most important cards here. I want to get rid of the Thoughtseize and get Collective Brutalities in instead. Cryptic Command will be important if we find ourselves to be in a racing position and the Conflagrate requires us to still main deck Counter Spells. Uh, this is actually a pretty tough one, let's see. <clears throat> So two lava mancers. It 
it is reasonable to put the logic nodes out here in order to protect our graveyard a little bit because we want to be heavy on the Grim Lava Mantis and the Conquer Squalls. And Collective Brutalities make it so that we might be able to race. So I think this is really important. These are okay. These are not really good. P and Kieran Lar. I don't think Nimble is good at all. Like we can, for instance, we could counter some triggers, um, blood gas trigger or something, but it's so unlikely that we hit something important. That's yeah, I think we're gonna go with this setup here. We do have a couple of counter spells. We might have the capability of going cryptic and race them for two turns, but being stuck with three cryptics in hand is also not the way to go. And yeah, this looks like a keep. Got all the important stuff. Except for black mana and Phyrexian scriptures. Phyrexian scriptures, of course, really important in the matchup. Or most important spell. Already really good discards No play by opponents. Uh, we've gotten the good thing for us is that Shriekhorn gives us a little bit of play with our Colgans commands um, that we usually wouldn't have against Dredge. So it makes our matchup a little better, but not really. I mean, it's still a super bad matchup. And this is also the only matchup that really um, would require us to... to play... Oh, shit. Call the Wraith Path, maybe. Sure. I think I'm just gonna bolt him though. Can deploy P and Kieran Lar next turn. Gory Thug, of course, by itself would be a way to have Dredge 4 again. So he just has Stink with him right now. If they don't do anything during that turn, we're gonna go Terminate. The Gory Thug. I think Widom Dredge is, of course, pretty good. He's not dredging. What the fuck? Why wouldn't he be dredging DM? What does he have that would warrant him to not to dredge DM? I'm not entirely certain here. We need more cars in our graveyards, and the Terminate is not going to be good anyway. So I'm just going to go with the Terminate here. Oh. Sure. There's another Grim Lava Man, sir. So I think it's super important here that we keep up 
kind of magic. I'm gonna go with another Labomancer and just attack with this one. Try to get as much damage in as we can in the time that we do have. And then once we got our counter spell out of our hand, we're gonna deploy Pian Kirin and then try to just finish it within a turn. I do not understand what's happening here. There's conflagrate in the graveyard. Might choose to go for it now. If that were to be the case, Okay, so he's just discarding a couple of cards. Conflagrate being zero. Okay. Let's see. Collective brutality. Down to 10, 8, 6, 2 activations, and an attack, right? All right. There he goes. There he goes. Um, brings in three armor grounds that are tapped, though. So we get one more attack with our Grim Levomancers, if we choose to. So what's happening now? Okay. Cloth conflagrate, all right. For x equaling two. Those come in. So the thing is, they do have another control rate in, in their graveyard. So we either just shoot them for six here. They have five cards in hand. So if we use P and Kieran Lar here. They probably get us as well. I'm not certain. I'm not certain. Jace with bold would be great, of course. Conflagrate makes everything a little more. Maybe we can force him, like if we activate Lava Mancer here, attack with one, like um, kill the Macromeva. Maybe we can force him to use the Conflagrate just on these two. Because if we just play the Jace, Conflagrate is such a strong card. I think Jace is not going to win us this year. This and probably reveal. And then we're. Okay, so it's four dead cards in hand that he cannot play. Ancient Grudge is a dead card as well. But we're up to 19. And we do have two Lava Mancer activations. And he needs to. Yeah. He's forced to use the Conflagrate now. And then we can follow it up with the PNK and Lar and hopefully then get there. Of course, we take 9 on the way. 
but being at 19 we might still manage to oh two blood gas as well ah, he has to decide i mean he needs to conflagrate here otherwise he just dies next turn lightning bolt off the top snapcast mage off the top there are a couple of cards that just kill him And that's why we boarded in Collective Brutality and the likes. All right, let's see. This and this. This and... Terminates. Calm school. All right, so we're taking 10 here. Calm school is gone. Oh, uh, Conflagrate is gone. Nah, that's not good enough. The problem is that if he draws a land, like he could loam, bring back blood gas. Oh, damn it. Guys, I think we're gonna lose this. <laughs> Sounds unlikely, but I think we are. Killed by a single conflagrate. So he's gonna loam, bring back at least two blood gas um, that are hasted. Yeah. Two hasted blood gas. And then, I mean, we only need, yeah. We can buy ourselves one more turn. So he does have a lands blocking black gas here. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so the least damaging way is we just block these three. I don't think that there is any other choice for us. All right, top deck. Lightning bolt. We got there, guys. We fucking got there against Dredge. 2 0. What the fuck? And so, yeah, we took the fight to them, the battle, and we actually got there. Um, so, pretty nerf-wrecking league with, you know, losing all the good matchups, winning all the bad ones. No, but overall, I think it was quite a fun league. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, if you cannot beat the graveyard, then you just have to develop um, other strategies of winning against your opponent. And in that case, you were actually able to stabilize and um, just chip in with um, Grim Lava Mancers and finish the job with a top deck bolt. So, great stuff there. And I hope you enjoyed the league. Uh, with a, yeah, in the end, a lot of ups, upsides, and see you next time, guys.